Yeah, obviously, uh, one of the things that's showing up for us as a team, and you know, I, I'm, I'm liking about this team is the maturity level that they're showing. You know, we, we win a game and we go in the locker room and it's almost as if we lost uh, because they know we didn't play as well as they wanted to play and we had some opportunities. But, you know, as a coach, I've got to make sure that they understand that you can't take winning football games for granted. And, and I say this a lot in here and maybe you guys don't understand because you, you played the game on paper that every single game will be a tough game uh, if we don't execute. It's always more about us than it is the other team. So give credit to Villanova. Uh, a well-coached team that stole a couple possessions in the middle eight of the game, which, you know, for me is frustrating because we, we want to develop some of the younger players. And when you lose that third quarter the way we lost it, we lost opportunities to develop the rest of our roster. And so that's, for me, the disappointment. Obviously, on offense, Billy was really efficient. Uh, man, Billy's playing clean, clean football for us, and Ty continues to be Ty. And, make the plays that, that he's capable of. It was great to see Caden get off to a fast start as well. So, you know, offensively, you know, we, we lost Roy or a late scratch this week. Uh, Dumeril gets nicked up there early in the game. And next thing you know, you look out, you see true freshman, uh, Therese Davis out there starting and playing left tackle for 80% of the game. And really did a good job holding his own, which is why it's important that we develop players and develop our guys. You know, some things on defense, I thought we had a strong first half. Um, didn't like the third quarter drive where we gave up a bunch of yards, but ended up with the missed field goal, but then gave the ball back. Um, so a lot of good things, a lot of good teaching, a lot of cleaning up that we can get done. Um, we're back in the conference play now on the road, which is always tough going on the road in the Big Ten against a really strong Indiana team. You know, I've had a chance to see them on a, a couple of games and, you know, they're doing a good job over there. I'm excited for us. Uh, to enjoy this one, put it behind us, make the necessary corrections, get in Monday, and start putting together a winning plan for us to go to Bloomington and, and find a way to, to take a victory. So uh, with that, I'll open up the questions. Sam is the first question. Hop one in there, Sam. You know, you talked about Billy, but I thought the run game, especially early, with really good offense line, being down a starter. How do you think they play? I know you guys are struggling. Kind of you know, one of the best things about this technology is you get to see the run game in real time, so it gives me a better view. You know, there were still some times where we're on edges, and we're just, you know, I, we ran the ball well early on because our backs made guys miss. Uh, you know, ran with great pad level, attacked the line of scrimmage. I do like early on that we tried to lay down on people and cover people up, but, you know, there came some times where we had the run through showing up, the movement, you know, with the moving pieces in there, with, you know, Dumerville leaving and then Therese coming in, there were some things that we had to get cleaned up. I thought the running game was just okay. Um, when we needed to run the ball today a couple times in some situational football, uh, we were able as backs to make the tough yardage, but I don't know how clean it was. And, and, and that's the work in progress of the two the two inexperienced areas of our team are our, our O-line and corners. And it, it, it keeps showing up, but some of the issues are showing up less. And to me, that's part of the development as we do get into the season. Right. Talk about Ty putting in the work, but you know, four straight games on 100 yards. Is he doing things that even you were like, wow, what's going to be for? Not really, man. I mean, I, I really, going into this season, I don't know, you know, I know the question mark was about quarterback. It wasn't about skill. And if you look at the plays that have been made, the Dylan Wade play, huge play, Preston Howard, uh, all three of those running backs typically have been making plays. It's Caden and, and, and Ty, KP and Ty on over the edges and off. We've got pieces. And now it's just a matter now of, you know, settling into the best run game that fits these pieces. I think the piece that, that makes it all go well is the quarterback play. And right now our quarterback's playing at a really, really high level. And I feel like we can put a, a, put a little bit more on him to allow him to get those pieces the ball a little bit more. How concerning the penalties for eight nine? I mean, it's concerning. I mean, when you tackle, you know, Glenn's playing without the helmet on. Those are plays that you know, I don't know how many times you, you talk about things where part of the rule book a few years ago, if the helmet comes off, you can't continue to play. 
we coach it, we hit situational football. We've got to execute stuff, and then it's my job to get it executed. Uh, the horse collar tackle is a lack of fundamentals. We do sideline tackle drills, long strides, short strides, and the strike. Don't stop your feet. When you stop your feet, you're reaching grab. Right. And, and, and those are coaching. So we're able to see it. we got to get it corrected. Hey, what's up, George? Good to see you. The uh, early part of that third quarter where Villanova got some momentum, onside kick and everything like that, is it you saying anything to your guys to get them kind of back engaged in that game, or did it come from within that they kind of flipped the switch and then got the one again? You know, it, it comes from within, but it's a, it's a mixture, man. Accountability is horizontal where, you know, yeah, I'm going to hold them accountable. You know, that the surprise on side should not have been a surprise. I mean, and for me as a coach that's coaching my coaches and coaching the team, when I look and see that, they must have saw something on tape that we're showing. Well, one of the fundamentals of being on the front line of kickoff return is not leaving until you see the ball kick. And it's a fundamental. And, you know, we got a true freshman there, Flowers, 23, good player. That's going to be a great player for us. I know we hate to hear it, but I bet you he won't leave early on the kickoff return anymore. And I always say it gets us when it gets us. These are the learning and growing pains of playing these young guys in these situations. I'm going to keep playing them because it'll pay dividends for us down the road. And, and, and we'll have to deal with it and coach and learn and teach. That's what they're paying me for. And we'll get those things corrected. And, and I like that it happened in the game where we won so that I can make these corrections and, and we'll be okay. Hey, coach. What's up, big man? Um, how important is it to come out the game and get the quick start that you guys need compared to last week when you guys kind of started slow? And just a follow-up to that, how important is it to score in the opening job of the game? Yeah, it was huge, huge for us because I know going into the game, Josh, one of our concerns, you know, when we look at the analytics of how they play, out of a scale of five in terms of pace, they're like 1.5. All right, 1.5 with one being the lowest. They like to shrink the game, play slow, use the clock, which when that happens for an offense like ours that, that thrives off of explosives, it puts pressure on you. And so going to part of the chess match for us was, do we take the ball the first drive or do we defer? Well, we decided we took the ball on offense, knowing and studying how they wanted to shrink the game. And so that first touchdown drive and then defensively going three and out and then getting another score was huge. And for a team like Villanova, a veteran 1AA or FCS team coming in, if you can strangle the life out of them early, you know, it was never a question about the game in my mind, how we were playing. I just hate that we don't play clean. And that's the, the job of me as a coach to figure out how to get us, you know, one game is the last part of the half. One game is how we don't finish in the fourth quarter of Michigan State. This game, the middle eight came in and, and got us. And so we're plugging and playing and fixing and correcting, which is all part of being a, a developmental program. And, and we got good coaches that will get it fixed and the players are taking the coaching. Play league culture is really helping us, so we'll get it fixed going in the end, and that's the plan. Coach, uh, Wayne, hi, great to see you. <laughs> Tommy Akimbasote has developed, he made a wonderful play at UVA where he recognized the play, caused a fumble. Today, he had a sack. Can you talk about the growth of these fourth year players? Yeah, and with Tommy, Wayne, you're exactly right. You know, with him, it, it's, it's the motor. He has the size, he has the skill, and now he's playing with the necessary motor that you need big guys to play. And I think he's starting to understand that if you want to play at the next level, that that group likes big guys that play with a motor. And I think Tommy, because of the way he's practicing, and, and I keep talking about, you know, practice should be the show and the show should be more like practice. That's what you're seeing with Tommy. And so that maturity is continuing with him. Uh, now the consistency is something that we've got to get from them, and I like what I'm seeing so far. Hey, good line tight end as well, and you know, pass forward to now, you know, first, no, didn't start, but you know, a lot of extensive time. He played like a starter. Yeah, so I guess just how, how would you kind of assess, you know, his, his first real stats in college? I mean, here's a guy that was late to football. He went to DeMatha, basketball guy, the son of Ricky Davis, and, and a basketball player who noticed early on and, and play tight end, you're right, play a lot of positions, but he's the type of player that we thrive on for recruiting because, you know, we see it's like Preston Howard as a quarterback that we said, hey, if you put some weight on and these are the skills we're looking for, pretty good tight end. So I, I like the way that we've evaluated 
Uh, obviously, Therese has put in the work to be able to go in. I mean, playing left tackle as a true freshman, like I know everybody here is, you know, probably can get it coached up, but for me, to have a true freshman play left tackle is a testament to the work that that guy has done, but also the job our coaches have done to get him prepared to play. And I don't care who it's against. And Therese is going to be a great player for us. He's getting exposed and learning early. Gave up the early sack. Again, a young player that's playing, that's, you know, we're, we're learning and winning. But the sack maybe didn't hurt us now, but it'll benefit us down the road as he develops. Three more? Yeah. Yeah. Early games, you get to use to get out of here. No, they don't want to be able to get Jordan Johnson, excellent sports entertainment. Coach, can you, <clears throat> secondary had another up and down day. Can you just speak to the development of that group and what you want to see moving out of from, from the next Conference yeah. Insert early quote, O-line, corner, inexperience, playing a lot of players, failing our way to, to gaining the experience, learning, filling the toolbox. I saw number 11. He was closer today, right? And now he's hit PIs. Before he wasn't even in the, the last frame of the film and two games ago, and now he's in position where he's in phase, and now he's playing the ball in the air, taking a peek as you're in phase. Azar's coaching the crap out of them. We're playing a lot of guys out on the edge and perimeter as we are trying to develop them. Because as I said, we've had some success with veteran guys that have moved on, and now we've, these young guys had opportunities today to grow. I saw 11 get better today. Kevis Thomas was back out there today. Chance Harley, you know, they had a couple of check chances where they saw Chance one on one and a former Villanova Wildcat, they wanted to check his oil a little bit. And he came up big for us, made some plays. The young corners are going to continue to be tested, and we've got to continue. And I thought B-Dub did a better job again today of mixing the, the picture up to protect them against some of those things that people want to attack. And uh, we got better today, but we did give up some plays that we can teach and coach. I think the big coaching point is they're closer now in coverage, and now it's becoming the receiver and playing the ball in the air to where we've had, had a couple of PIs on third down, which we can't have. Right. Two more. Jack, wait, Jack, what's up? Uh, watch. It was a uh, Maryland family weekend. I don't know if you noticed any extra energy coming from the stadium, but what was it like getting a home win in front of the extended turf? Yeah, I know it was a lot of extra traffic, you know, as we tried to get off campus and get on campus, which is a good thing. So kudos to our marketing team and the people over at Xfinity for finding a way to get a bunch of people to come see this football program as we uh, continue to grow and develop it. Uh, obviously, it was mental health awareness as well, which is something really big to me and, and our program. And so the mixture of having our parents back here uh, with their kids uh, did a great job of getting people into the stadium um, and keeping them there for the most part. And then the awareness that we continue to show and the resources they continue to pour into the mental health piece, which has become even more prominent uh, with the football program here. And, you know, so great day for Terps. Great day in Terpsville. Well, I'm the mayor, I think. Got one more for you, Mayor, back here. Oh, oh, yeah. um, looked on Twitter today, uh, towards the end of this game, saw the name Ty Felton next to the word Heisman quite a bit. Do you think Ty Felton should be in that Heisman conversation right now? I mean, that's for Heisman voters and people to think. Um, you know, I think the high tide rises all ships. The better we play, the better opportunities guys have. Has been a part of some guys that have had the opportunity to compete and go to the Heisman trophies. Guys that have played in this system like Matt and Tua and Jalen, and guys like Smitty and, and those guys have, uh, so the system creates these opportunities. Ty is taking advantage of these opportunities. And if the people have spoken, let the marketing begin because he's playing at a high level. Heisman, okay, Heisman. <laughs>